Welcome to Big D, Dallas, Texas, and the house the Pony Express built. Dickerson and James and SMU hoping to restore the glory and get things started in this one. Little gets the blood boiling. Why like a rivalry game? Barbs, shots, crash talk, things that go on throughout the week will now all be settled on this field. As we'll see a squad from the Big 12, the TCU Horn Frogs taking on a team from the ACC, the SMU Mustang. 48 Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, let's get this thing started. And the Mustangs will boot it away to start the game. And he takes this from inside the five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. So TCU's offense will get the first possession of the game. There are always butterflies to start a game, but when you have a rivalry like this, the adrenaline is pumping on overdrive, guys. They aren't all the same. We say that, but we know differently. The blood is boiling. The temperature is hot. Jesse, you want this week more than most. Yeah, and we played in these games before. Everything just seems to be heightened, right? The game seems to be moving faster. The crowd noise feels louder. Your composure will be tested early in a game like this. Makes the stop at the 32, but he picks up 10 on that play. The Horn Frogs are in the hurry up. They'll give it to the back. The ball scores free. Defense swarming on that loose ball. It'll be a turnover. I'll tell you, honestly, I don't know what that player could have done to hold on to that football. That defender absolutely popped him. He knocked him into next week. There was no chance he was holding on to that ball. The offense set for a first down play. Let's go! Here's the handoff. Not a whole lot of room there. Three yards maybe, second and seven. I like feeding my guy. I like getting my running back touches, feeding the ball so he can break some of those big runs. But I'm also okay with these little ones. Set the tone, stay balanced. To the air, it's Stone. He'll try to do it himself. Finds a crease at the 20. Finally run out of bounds, but he has his offense rolling with a first down. And you're seeing here the difficulties defenses have trying to contain this guy. If you leave a lane opener, you don't sack him right away. You allow him to get outside the pocket. He is going to take off, and he is very difficult to tackle in the open field. He's got running back-like ability out in space. They want to run it left here. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. They're trying to run the football. And there's just nowhere to go for the ball carrier inside. He tried to bounce it to the outside. That linebacker way too fast. He met him there and forced the TFL. Going to work in the red zone, they can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. And the quarterback is knocked down back at the 13. Well, quarterback went down behind center pretty quick that time, and it makes you wonder as a play caller, against this pass rush, do you start thinking about maybe rolling your quarterback out and changing the launch point? Ready. Really need to pick up this conversion and avoid having to settle for the field goal. On third and long, he's going to have to throw for it. He caught it. And he wanted to score badly, but the defense wrestles him down at the two. Line of scrimmage is the two, and they can pick up the first down here, but going for the touchdown here on fourth and short. just cradling that fumble and securing it. Pass the 50, the 40, the 20. Touchdown, Horn Frogs! Don't just get the ball, score with the ball, and the defense did. 
And I love the way they break on the football, swarm to the football. This is why you do it, because sometimes the ball comes out, the linebacker picks it up, and tell you what, the big fella shows some speed, takes it all the way back for six. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point is good, and it's 7-0. The scoop and score. What a lift it can give to the defense. Not content to get the ball. They wanted to do something with it, and they did. He'll start the return inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The SMU offense is headed back onto the field. A really disappointing end of that last drive, David. Getting stopped on fourth and goal, they'll try to regroup. And, and I think I'm preaching to my squad right now. Listen, we drove the ball down the field. We didn't just punch it in. Let's put another drive together, Jesse. And this time, let's get some points. You're right, because there were a lot of positives on that last drive. They did a lot of things really well. They just got to do a better job finishing. That pass is incomplete, and they're probably fortunate that it wasn't knocked free for a fumble. This defense has kept them backed up. Now one more stop, and they can get off the field on third and long. Snagged in the middle. It's Hudson. And he picks up enough for the first down. We'll see if they get another snap here in the first quarter. That's the end of the quarter, and TCU has the lead. And we've come to the end of the first as we take a moment to check out the stats so far. Heading in the opposite directions now as we crank it up in the second. They'll break the seal on this quarter here on first down. Leaves it with the running back. He puts him in business across the 50 into the 46-yard line. It'll be first down. And here we go. If you're an offense, you've got to get that ground game going so you can have some balance, and then you give it to your quarterback, Palmer, and let him make some plays down the field later on. Yeah, exactly. And then coming into this game, this offense knew they were going to have to some way, somehow, at least establish a semblance of a running game for exactly what you just said. you got to be able to use play-action pass later in this game to get some explosive plays down the field. And it's a play like that that we just saw, which can help them get that going. It's hard to run on a defense that comes off the ball like that and runs to the football like that. Good luck. No holes anywhere. Feeling some heat. And the defense will corral the quarterback, and down he goes at midfield. The Mustangs decide to punt it away. First punt of the day, and he'd love to lock them up close to their goal line. We've reached the two-minute warning, and we'll see if the offense can build on this lead before the break. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. This time, they need to take care of the ball and maybe extend this lead, David. And I think you got to look at the positive, Reese. You still got the lead. Now take care of the football. Put a nice drive together, Jesse. You don't have to stress. We're still winning. I feel like they think that player for player, they're the better unit on the field right now. They just got to make more plays. This offense has a second down play. Back to pass. It's Hoover. Pocket starts to collapse. And the Heat gets there. And they get him down at the 14-yard line. Well, that's not what you wanted to have happen offensively, right? Second and inches, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. You go past, you get sacked, and now you got to come up with a big catch and throw to just stay on the field. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third down, he'll try to pick it up through the air. You know, as an offense, you've got to do a better job pass protecting, and you've got to start thinking about max protection at this point of the game. Because if you don't get hats on hats, your quarterback goes down on his own two-yard line, you're lucky you didn't give up a safety.
And the Horned Frogs will try to pin them back with the punt. Three and out. They got stuck in reverse. They hope the punt can bail them out. And the punt team able to sling him to the ground. The Mustangs have the ball back and ready to go to work. In modern college football, Jesse, if there's time, there's an opportunity to attack. And I like them being aggressive here too, guys. Look, they, they practiced this all week long. Now you're in that situation to go out there, have some fun, and let it fly. And defenses are taught to stay deep, play prevent in these situations. So I think you could get a good chunk play and then possibly get a field goal to tack on before the half. Now from inside the red zone. Finds his man, it's Bailey. A timeout is called as this offense tries to find a way to get more points on the board before the half. Running out of time here in the first half, they're gonna have to be efficient to put some points on the board before the break. Finds his man down the middle. They'll use a timeout right before halftime, maybe time for one or two more plays. And backed up, first and goal. This defense fighting to hold the lead and carry it to the locker room. And he'll finish the run in the end zone. Touchdown, Mustang! And I love that this offense stuck to it. Stuck to the run game, didn't panic. They got down, but they answered the bell right before the half, and they got this thing right where they want it now. They can tie this football game and hopefully go into the half with a lot of momentum. Running up to add another. Smashes it through for the PAT. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And he found his way to the end zone from the seven to cap it. So here comes the kickoff after the touchdown. And the last thing you need right before the half is to give up a big return. On the move from inside is five. They finally make the stop. That's going to make those halftime stats look a little bit nicer as we head to the break. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Thanks so much, guys, and I need not tell you, rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion, and no surprise, we saw just that in the first half today. And it's been a clinic in fundamental defensive football. Both teams have been relentless and ball hawking, refusing to give an inch. This is the kind of slugfest that real football fans love. Crushing tackles and dudes flying into gaps and passing lanes a testament to the discipline both of these teams have shown. That said, let's get back to the field and our guys in the booth to see who comes out on top of this rivalry contest. All right, Kevin about ready to get things cranked back up here. The Horned Frogs will boot it away to start the second half. And he'll bring it out of the end zone. <laughs> Not nearly as much as he had hoped when he brought it out of the end zone. He'll be stopped at the 15. The SMU offense is headed back onto the field. First drive of the second half, always fun to watch. You see what type of tweaks were made at the half, especially when you're locked up in a ball game like this one. Yeah, and it's been a good game. I mean, it's been a little bit of back and forth and, and a feeling out process. And now once you get in the second half, who's going to get aggressive, Paul? Who's going to take some shots, try to make some plays, and really go for it? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think as play callers right now, you learn a lot about these coaching staffs with respect to who does make the best adjustments. There's a lot of coaches that believe we're just going to be who we are. We're going to keep doing what we do. We're just going to do it better. But then there are others that tweak things a little bit on offense and on defense. We're going to find out here. And the defense doing a great job committing to the run. When you commit to the run like this, obviously you can give up some plays in the passing game, but you got to stop the run first. Complete in the middle. Found enough room to get it into enemy territory. They're down at the 43-yard line. And I love the awareness by the wide receiver on that play because I'm not sure that route was supposed to be that deep. You got to wonder if the receiver decided maybe to adjust the route a little bit to make sure that he got the first down. And the Mustangs will snap it on first and 10. 
Give to the back. After the pickup of nine, it's second and one. Yeah, this coaching staff, they're getting this offensive line lathered up and into a rhythm now. They're letting them drive off the ball on first down on these running plays, and they're getting chunks of yardage. The big pickup on first down leaves them with second and one. He's got it again. Tackled, but he has a first down. And you know, big chunks like this don't happen unless you commit to the run game. You got to get those big boys up front into the game, understanding I want to knock people off the football, create some holes like you do here for my running back, make the game easy. They're down to the 25 on first and 10. Back to pass, it's Stone. It's complete to the right. He's brought down, but he's got him inside the 10, first and goal from the eight. How about the mix of play calls on this drive? Three runs, three passes, and now they're in business. And just keeping the defense completely off balance. When you think it's a run, it's a pass. When you think it's a pass, it's a run. Nice job by this offense going right down the field in six plays and now set up a first and goal. He pushes his way down to the four as they get closer and closer. What a ride. It's been through the first three quarters of this game. We are all tied up. Let's check out some stats. These two teams about to find out what they're made of as we open the fourth all tied up. Ready up. They love to start this quarter off with a touchdown right here. On second and goal, he gets another chance. He works his way ever closer all the way down to the one-yard line. Well, he gets tackled down at the one-yard line, so offensively, do you feel confident enough on third here trying to hand it off again? Yeah, and I'm taking both these downs, and I'm coming downhill. I'm running the football trying to get this in the end zone. I only got a yard to go. I got to be physical. Wide receiver shows motion. The give. Touchdown, SMU! And with that, they move out front here in the fourth. And I love the physicality of this offense. It's third and goal. It's money time. I've got to be more physical than you. And that's exactly what this offense just did. Put the ball on the ground and put it in the end zone. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. The extra point is good, and now in the fourth, they're up by a touchdown and an extra point. So a drive there of 85 yards, and they capped it off with a one-yard plunge. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. Here he comes from inside his own five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. TCU has it back in the Horned Frogs go on offense. The last time we saw this offense, we had to look quick. It was a three and out, Jesse. They just had no rhythm in that last drive. So someone's going to have to step up and make a play, David, and get this thing going. Yeah, let's find some juice. Find your guy. Find those plays that you know you can run inside out, forward, backwards. Get some first downs. Get some positive momentum. Still at their own 20 after that last incompletion. It's second and 10. Looking to throw, it's Hoover. Complete with conviction on the crosser. He'll move it up to the 37-yard line, and it'll be a first down. If they're going to sit back in zone, I'm going to make sure I know exactly what they're doing, find those holes, find those crossing patterns, and take advantage of that zone coverage. And the Horned Frogs want to pick up the tempo. Back to the ground with the running back. At midfield, he's got room. Brought down at the 47-yard line after the 15-yard pickup. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Trying to get to it. 
Hit hard as he released the ball on that first down pass, and it never had a chance. Here they come on second and 10 from the 47 after the incompletion. He's looking to throw. The sure hands, it's Richardson. And he goes out of bounds after a nice pickup on that one. Getting late, pressure building, huge third down coming up on the road for this offense. They're trying to get to it. Got it in the middle, it's Richardson. Really nice job there by both guys to throw and the catch to work that defense and get the first down. We've reached the two-minute warning, and the defense needs to come up with a stop to close this thing out. Most important part of a clutch drive, piece together some first downs, get in position, and here they are on first and ten. They're going to throw it again. That's caught. It's Williams. They stop him just short of the first down, but it will be second and inches coming up. Wideouts all wadded up in a bunch. On second down, he's looking downfield. And that's just a flat misfire, not even close to his receiver. Give that guy a lot of credit, man. He was able to somehow avoid that sack, but nobody opened downfield, throws it away. He's got the tight end. Tackle is made after the first down. The Horned Frogs come to the line with a new set of downs. They've marched to the red zone, and here they go. And the physical play there forces the incompletion on first down. This offense just wearing this defense down. 11th play of the drive coming. Going to the running game. They'll give him a couple. That leaves him with third and eight. I never know if it's grammatically correct to say a team is being out physical. You hear it a lot in football, though. That's happening in this game. They are just not getting the push they need all game long up front to have any success when they decide to go. Oh, no, the ball popped out. This could change things. A defense scoops it up, and they're bringing it back. Nothing but green grass down the middle. At the 20. And this defense breaks it open as they return it to the house for six. These guys are starting to separate themselves a little bit now, and it could get ugly if there's no answer coming up. Nail me confident. You know, we're supposed to keep everybody involved in this game, right? Keep them excited and reasonably tune in. Well, I don't got one. This is over. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point is true, and they have a two-touchdown lead, up 14 in the fourth. That is a defensive player's dream. Ball sitting there, chance to scoop it up, run with it, and they don't stop you until the band starts playing. They're out there to kick it off. The return team must rivet that ball to their rib cage. Can't afford another turnover. And no chance at a return here. They'll start this drive at their own 25. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. Looking for a productive play on first down. Back to throw. It's Hoover. Gets it out quickly. And a good job in coverage there as they stop it after just a few. Now they've got to hustle to the line and get set. On second down, they'll take to the air. They're breathing. And here's a fumble way behind the line. And they get the fumble back, but time is still dwindling away. They got to get it going. On third and long, he's going to have to turn one loose downfield. Just had to get rid of that one. Good job to avoid the loss. After that incompletion, fourth and long now on your own side of the field, you're trailing in the fourth quarter. What's your go-to play call here in the passing game? Where is the matchup that you trust in to come up with a big one to give yourself a chance to stay alive and win this game? He's going up top here late in the game. 
What a spectacular grab there as they try to finish this game with a little something to feel good about. Give him six and give them a chance with the late touchdown still alive in this one. If we had any chance to make this happen, we had to score with a little bit of time on the clock. Now we need a miracle. Now, now we need to kick the onside, get an onside kick, and somehow, some way, make a big play. On to attempt the try. And with the extra point, they're down a touchdown, 21-14. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And the finish shows just how potent they are, an 88-yard touchdown pass. They'd hope to get that thing bouncing around, but the hands team is able to corral it. Yeah, and this is why you put your hands team on the field most of the time you, when you know it's coming and you put those guys that are great catchers of the football. The first guys, what do they do? They go block. They go blow somebody up. The next guys catch the football, secure it, get your butt on the ground. And most of the time when you do this, the ball game is over. Looking for a physical attack from the gun. And he has a solid gain before the defense bottles him up. Defense uses a timeout quickly trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. Got six on first down. Now a lot of options on second and four. 29 Philly. Two, go. They feed him again. Smashes through. The timeout stops the clock with 10 seconds to play. Got it. Trying to move the sticks on third down. They'll stick to the ground, looking for the marker. That'll be enough for the first down as they mark it down at the 31-yard line. They'll use the timeout, six seconds left on the clock. Ready, Running out the clock, a mere formality between them and a victory as we have victory formation coming. No matter how much college football changes, realignment, all of that kind of stuff, rivalries are consistent and winning rivalry games, well, that's just the best. Because they hate each other so much. So you take the field against your rival, you're able to put up forth a performance like that. That is worth its weight in gold, David. Unbelievable effort here by the winning team and bragging rights now for a while. Bragging rights for a while. It's, it's a fun thing to be able to accomplish. Now we also got to take in the next couple games because this is always there's a letdown that naturally happens after these big rivalry wins we feel like our chest is poked out we got to look on to the next game focus in on this next one so that's going to do it for us for jesse palmer david pollock i'm reese davis saying so long this has been another presentation of ea sports college football